Okay, so we're going to go over the review for exam three. So the first question is asking is what is the area under the standard normal distribution to the right of negative 0.89? So we're seeking this area here to the right of negative 0.89. Well, we look up a Z value in table E. So we will look up negative 0.89 so we have negative point and we go all the way under 9 and we end up with an area of 0.1867 but that's the area on the left side we want the area on the right side so we subtract 0.1867 from 1 that's going to give us an area of 0.8133 and then we want to find the area under the standard uh, normal distribution uh, between z is 2.01 and 3.05 well in this case we look up both z values to get their areas and then we subtract smaller area from larger area that's going to give us an answer of 0 0.0211 if we want the area to the left of a z value such as 1.57 that's this area um, there's not much work you have to do, just look it up in table E and we get our answer, which is 0.9418. Um, for number four, we have to find the missing Z value. So we are given the area of 0.3621 that lies between zero and, and um, some unknown Z value. So what we need to do is we need the area all the way to the left of that Z value. So we have to include the 0.5 so we're going to add 0.5 with 0.3621 to get a combined total area of 0.8621 we're now going to we'll look up that um, z value here so we're looking for 0.8621 when we look it up we have to look inside the chart and it's right here 0.8621 look to the left 1.0 look up 0 0.9 and we have the z value 1.09 for number five we have an application problem it says the average amount of snow per season in trafford is 44 inches standard deviation is six inches find the probability that next year trafford will receive at most 50 inches of snow and we assume the variable is normally distributed well, your first step is we have to convert 50 to a z-value using our standard uh, z-score formula. So it's 50 minus the mean, 44, divided by 6 is 1. So we're looking under the standard normal distribution, we're looking for the area less than 1. We look that up in table E to get a, a probability of 0.8413. Number 6. Same information, but now we're looking for at least 53 inches of snow. So that means we're looking for an area to the right. So we have to convert 53 to a Z value. So we take 53 minus 44 divided by 6, 1.5. And we, since it's at least, we want the area to the right. So now we just look up the Z value to get 0.9332, but that's this left area. To get this right tail, we take 1 minus 0.9332, which is 0 0.0668. Uh, number seven, we're looking for a cutoff score. So it says, for an educational study, a volunteer must place in the top 35% on a test. If the mean for the population is 100 and the standard deviation is 15, find the cutoff score that would enable a volunteer to participate in this study. Assume the variable is normally distributed. So we're given a top percentage, that's this area, 0.35, but we want the area to the left because we're going to use this area to get our missing Z value. So 1 minus 0.35 is 0.65. Now we turn to our table. Um, we look for the area inside of here for the area closest to 0.65.
that will be 0 .5, 0.6517. So if you look to the left, you look up, that's our Z value, 0 0.39. And we have our cutoff score formula, mu plus Z sigma. Well, we know Z, it's 0 0.39. Mu is the mean, 100. Standard deviation is 15. Calculate, and I just round to 106. So that would be the minimum cutoff score. Um, we have a central limit theorem problem here. So it says the average annual salary in Pennsylvania it was uh, 44393 I think that was not 1992. I would just say it was last year. Assume that salaries were normally distributed for a certain group of wage earners and the standard deviation of the group was 5,362, find the probability that for a randomly selected sample of 25 individuals, that tells us we will be using the distribution of sample means because now we're given a sample as, if you compare that to the previous problems, we were just working with samples of one. So it's saying the mean salary was less than 46,000. So, well, we have to use our other conversion formula, n is 25, um, when I do the calculation in my calculator, I like to take the reciprocal of our denominator. So we're still going to find the difference between the sample and population mean, but we multiply by radical n over sigma. So we plug in our information, perform the calculation, we get 1.5. And um, all we have to do is look up 1.5, that's going to be this area, and it's 0.9332. Number nine is a confidence interval formula from chapter seven. It says a study of 40 bowlers showed that their average score was 186. The standard deviation of the population is six. Find the 95% confidence mean for all, of all bowlers. Round the answer to whole numbers. So our first step is we're gonna find our Z value using our table F, right? So we go to 95% and go all the way down to the very bottom. 1.96 is the Z value. And then we just insert our information. The sample mean was 186. The Z value is 1.96. Sigma is six. And we have 40 bowlers, that's N. Perform your calculations. The mean is between, and we round to whole numbers, 184 and 188. We have another example of a um, confidence interval for the mean using Z values. So in this problem, we're now given 90% confidence level. So for 90% confidence level, we go all the way down to the very bottom of the column, 1.65. And that's the value that we insert for Z. X bar um, is 4,150 pounds. So in this case, we have 40 randomly selected school buses. That um, The average weight of those 40 uh, school buses is 4,150 pounds. Population standard deviation is 480 pounds. Um, we're gonna insert that information into the formula here, perform our calculations. We're rounding to whole numbers. So the mean is somewhere between 4,013 and 4,287 pounds. Now, if you notice, for these two problems, we were given the population standard deviation. Population standard deviation. That's going to tell us that we use the Z values, right? Because population standard deviation is sigma. In our next problem, they're giving us the sample standard deviation. So it says a sample of 20 tuna show that they swim an average of 8.6 miles per hour. The standard um, deviation for the sample is 1.6. Find the 90% confidence interval of the true mean. Well, if you notice, we are now given the sample standard deviation, which is S. Sigma is unknown, thus we have to use T values. 
So to use our t values, our first step is we look up or we compute degrees of freedom. So 20 minus 1 is 19. And now we will go to our table. These are the t values above the z values. So we go down to 19, level 19. And our confidence level, once again, was 90%. So from 90%, that's the second column, go down to level 19, 1.729. That's going to be our T value. So we insert our T value, the sample mean of 8.6, sample standard deviation of 1.6, and the number of tuna sampled is 20. Perform the calculations. It, uh, final answer is between the uh, miles per hour is between 8 and 9.2 miles per hour. Have total mean. Number 12 is we are looking at computing a confidence interval for proportions. It says a poll of 600 frequent business travelers found that 360 of them found business traveling stimulating. What is the 95% confidence interval for the true proportion of business travelers who find business travel? stimulating round to three place values. Well, step one, we have to compute our sample proportion. That's X over N. N is 600. Of those 600 business travelers, 360 found uh, traveling stimulating. So we divide to get 0.6. That's our sample proportion P hat. Q hat is 1 minus P hat, so 1 minus 0.6, which is 0.4. And 95%, once again, we go to table F, we find that it's 1.96. Plug this information into our formula, compute. We get the population proportion is somewhere between 0.561 and 0.639. Remember, round the three place values. We have three uh, place values here. Number 13 says an educator desires to estimate within 0.03 the true proportion of high school students who study at least one hour each night. He wants to be 98% confident how large a sample is necessary. So when you see this sentence, that's asking for N. Previously, he conducted a study and found that 60% of the 250 students surveyed spent at least one hour each school night studying. So 60% is p hat. 1 minus, so we can think of 60% as 0.6. 1 minus 0 0.6 is 0 0.4. So p hat is 0 0.6. q hat is 0 0.4. Whenever you see the word within, that's an indication of dealing with the error. So the error is 0 0.03. We uh, look up and remember, since we're dealing with proportions, we're always working with Z values. So we look for 98% in table F, and we go all the way down to the Z value, 2.33. And that's what we plug in this part of the formula. Perform your calculation, always round to upwards to the next whole number. So it's 1,448. That's the minimum sample size. We have another minimum sample size, but now this problem is when you're trying to construct a confidence interval for the mean. It says a psychologist is measuring the mean reaction time of mice to the ringing of a bell. How large a sample must uh, be collected? Must be collected measurements to ensure that the reaction time is within 0 0.01. That's our error seconds at 99% confidence level. Population standard deviation 0 0.04. Well, 99%, we're looking for a Z value, 2.58. Uh, minimum sample size for the mean, this is our formula, pretty simple. Z we found is 2.58. Standard deviation 0 0.04, error 0 0.01. Perform the calculations, round upwards, to 107. Uh, number 15 is a problem from 5.3. So the last three are problems from 5.3. Um, that will be on our exam. 
If eight people exercising in the streets of LA County are randomly selected, then use the binomial distribution to compute the chance that exactly four of them are wearing a mask to protect from infection. The chance of a person who is exercising in LA is it? See, the chance of a person who is exercising is wearing a mask is estimated to be 0.88. So um, this is going to be a binomial distribution problem. So we're using our binomial formula. P is 0.88. Q is 1 minus 0.88, which is 0.12. N is 8. X is 4. So we insert this information into our formula and calculate. So that probability, 0.0087. Number 16, the chance that a mother will receive flour or flowers as a gift on Mother's Day is 64%. If 120 mothers are randomly selected, then use the binomial distribution to determine the average number of mothers who will receive flowers as a gift on Mother's Day. Round to a whole number. Well, whenever we're trying to find the mean for a binomial distribution, we use this formula, mu is NP. 120 times 0 0.64, 76.8. So of the 120, we would expect 77 mothers to receive flowers. Possibly more, but that's just our average. Now, same question, but we're asked to find the standard deviation. Well, the standard deviation is radical NPQ. Well, that's radical 120 times 0.64 times 0.36 which com comes out to 5.26. Now, if, if you're in my regular stats course, you can end here. Any of my students who are in the stats with support course, please continue onwards to the last three problems. Because our test is actually, uh, for the stats with support students, it's going to encompass chapter five as well as six and seven. So we have three other questions here. We're given a um, discrete probability distribution. It involves the chance of students dropping a particular class or a particular number of classes given a semester. So they could say, I'm not dropping any, I'm dropping one, two, three, or all four courses. These are the probabilities. To compute the mean, all we do is multiply each outcome times each probability, as we're doing here and then we add those products together. So the average number of classes dropped given, these, given the distribution is 0.71. Number 19 is a little bit more complicated. It's asking for the standard deviation. So it should say standard deviation of the distribution. So for this problem, we have to square each x value. So square each outcome, multiply the square with the given probability, as we've done here, add all those products, and do not forget to subtract out the mean square. So we perform our calculations. This sum of products will be 1.43. The square of the mean is 0.5041. Find the difference. 0.9259. Now that's the variance. We're not interested in the variance. We want the standard deviation. So take the square root and we have 0.962 as our answer. And the final question is um, an expected value question. So it says a pair of dice is tossed once. If a sum of five is rolled, the player wins $5. If a sum of 12 is rolled, the player wins $10. Um, any other sum comes up, they win nothing. So their money's gone. The cost to play the game is a dollar. What's the expected value? Well, in our formula, we always average out the winning. So you take 5 times 4 out of 36 plus 10 out of 1 over 10 times 1 over 36. 4 out of 36, that's the total number of ways of getting a sum of 5. 1 out of 36 is the total number of ways of getting a sum of 12. And then we have to subtract out the loss. So we 5 times 4 is 20, 10 times 1 is 10, add 
the numerators of the fractions, 20 plus 10 is 30 out of 36, convert to a decimal, 30 out of 36 converts to 0.83, subtract out the 1, expected value is negative 17 cents. The game is not fair. It favors the house. On average, they're winning 17 cents per game. And that concludes our review for exam three. I just want to wish everyone good luck on the exam this week. Stay safe. We're getting close to the end of our course. Hang in there.